Bonjour, good day. Two things I want to talk about today. First off, we know that it, it has been repeated again and again by experts, paid sick leave will save lives. And what we have is at the federal level a paid sick leave program, but it just doesn't work enough. And the government knows this. Justin Trudeau knows this. It knows that it's not working and can make it better. And it is not helpful to get into a blame game or get into a standoff, whether the provinces should do it or the federal government should do it. We just need to get it done. There's already a program that exists, just make it better. This will save lives. Justin Trudeau is not doing enough by just saying we've got something, it's not adequate, but it's there and just crossing his arms and standing off on the sidelines. That is not good enough. We need to improve it immediately. No worker should go to work sick. Experts are telling us that is where people are getting sick. They're getting sick at work. And then they're bringing it home to their families and their families are getting sick. This can stop. We can put an end to this if the, Lib if the Liberal government, the federal government, if Justin Trudeau just brought in paid sick leave that worked. Just improve the program, make it work. That's what we're asking for. We're gonna continue to push for it. This is vital, this will save lives. And on um, the ongoing uh, issues at, uh, in, the, in the Canadian forces, I, I wanna be very clear here. Justin Trudeau at this point knows everything. You know, if there's a question of who knew what when, we can put that aside and say, right now, what is Justin Trudeau going to do? Knowing what we know right now, what are you going to do? How can he allow a minister to continue to be there who completely ignored complaints brought up by women? What message does this send to women in the Canadian forces? Right now, if you raise a concern as a woman in the Canadian forces and it makes it to the highest level, it goes to the ombuds and it makes it to the, to the minister of defense, then nothing's going to happen. That will send, that is already sending a chilling message to women in their armed forces that they are not safe, that they're not going to be listened to. That is wrong. Justin Trudeau needs to do something now. What is he going to do? What are the steps he's going to take? What action is he going to take to remedy this problem, to fix this problem? Right now, there is a serious issue. Women don't feel safe. They need to know that they're safe. So what is Justin Trudeau going to do? And then we, we put that question directly to him. Knowing what he knows now, what is he going to do? Donc, euh, je, veux, je veux soulever deux enjeux aujourd'hui. Premièrement, c'est un programme de congé de maladie payée. Tous les experts sont d'accord. Un programme de congé de maladie payée qui fonctionne va sauver les vies. C'est simple. On a toujours des travailleurs et travailleuses qui, qui, va au travail, qui vont au travail et qui tombent malades et et puis ils partagent cette infection euh, avec euh, leur famille. On peut arrêter tout ça avec un programme de congé des maladies payées qui fonctionne. On a déjà un programme au niveau fédéral, on doit l'améliorer. C'est clair, c'est simple, on doit le faire. Justin Trudeau ne peut pas laisser avec les bras, les bras croisés et, et dire que non, on a fait quelque chose et c'est suffisant. Ce n'est pas suffisant, c'est clair. Ce n'est pas une question de blâmer les, les provinces, c'est une question d'aider les familles qui ont besoin d'un congé de maladie payée pour qu'ils puissent rester chez eux quand ils tombent malades. Et ça va sauver les vies. Donc, on doit la faire et on doit la faire tout de suite. Donc, on continue de mettre la pression sur le gouvernement libéral, sur Justin Trudeau, d'améliorer le programme de congé de maladie payée pour sauver les vies. Et finalement, avec ce qui se passe dans... Uh, les forces canadiennes. À ce moment, le message que Justin Trudeau a envoyé aux femmes dans les forces canadiennes, c'est vous n'êtes pas écouté et vous n'êtes pas sécuritaire. Donc, maintenant, avec toute la connaissance, toute l'information qui est là, qu'est-ce que le Premier ministre va faire? Qu'est-ce que Justin Trudeau, Trudeau va faire pour régler ce problème? Pour régler le fait qu'une femme a soulevé uh, un problème et ce problème est arrivé au bureau du ministre des Défenses et rien n'a été fait. Ça envoie un message horrible aux femmes. Donc, qu'est-ce que le premier ministre va faire pour régler ça? Qu'est-ce qu'il va faire avec le ministre? Qu'est-ce qu'il va faire pour, pour protéger les femmes dans les forces canadiennes? Qu'est-ce qu'il va faire? Et c'est une question qu'il doit répondre. C'est une question à laquelle il doit répondre maintenant. Merci, thank you for that. Uh, with that, I'm ready to take any questions. Je suis prêt pour prendre vos questions.
Et nous allons passer aux questions, commençant par les questions au téléphone. Comme à l'habitude, une question, une question suivie par journaliste. We'll now take questions, starting with questions on the phone. As a reminder, one question, one follow-up per reporter. Operator, do we have first question? Operator, do we have a first question? Uh, yes, uh, sorry, the, the, the volume cut out for me. Uh, la première question vient de Madame Catherine Lévesque de la Presse canadienne. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Bonjour. Euh, le volume aussi a coupé à quelques reprises de mon côté également. Euh, je voulais revenir sur la, le projet de loi là, sur la, la, la grève là, au port de Montréal. Vous avez dit hier que votre parti était prêt à utiliser tous les outils possibles pour montrer votre opposition. Je me demandais, à la suite de cette rencontre avec votre caucus, est-ce que vous avez une meilleure idée des outils que vous allez utiliser pour montrer votre opposition? À ce moment, on veut dire quelque chose euh, clair. Premièrement, ce que le, libéra le gouvernement libéral, ce, ce que Justin Trudeau fait, c'est complètement opposé de ce que le gouvernement doit faire. Ils, ont, ils sont en train d'empêcher de des négociations et, et c'est une mauvaise décision. Ce n'est pas ce qu'ils doivent faire. Et ce qu'on doit faire, c'est d'aider de, de les travailleurs et travailleuses, d'avoir la capacité de négocier un, une convention collective. C'est le droit des travailleurs et travailleuses de faire ça. Et effectivement, ce que le gouvernement propose de faire, c'est de brimer les droits des travailleurs et travailleuses et c'est exactement ce qu'on critique les conservateurs de faire. Et ils ont fait la même chose dans le passé. Et les libéraux proposent de faire la même chose. On doit laisser les travailleurs et travailleuses de faire leur travail, d'avoir l'opportunité d'arriver à une convention collective. Et on va continuer d'opposer les, les mesures du gouvernement libéral d'empêcher les droits des travailleurs et travailleuses. Mais j'imagine ce que j'aimerais savoir, M. Singh, c'est est-ce que vous allez faire quelque chose sur le plan procédural pour vous y opposer ou, vous allez, ou votre parti va tout simplement voter contre? On va continuer de se battre pour les travailleurs et travailleuses. On va continuer de soulever comment c'est une mauvaise décision qui empêche les droits des travailleurs et travailleuses. On va continuer de mettre la pression pour montrer que ce n'est pas la bonne chose à faire. Et on va continuer de tenir debout pour les travailleurs et les travailleuses. Les libéraux ont montré encore le vrai visage, le fait qu'ils ne sont pas euh, du bord des travailleurs et travailleuses. Et on va continuer de montrer que ce n'est pas la bonne chose à faire. Opérateur, prochaine question. Merci. The next question is from Mike Lecouteur from Global News. Please go ahead. Mr. Singh, thanks for taking our questions. I wanted thanks, to sir. ask you um, about something that you said in your opening remarks. We are hearing more and more people uh, in the Prime Minister's office who knew about allegations against uh, General Vance. A copy of a motion that was obtained by Global News shows that the Conservatives plan to ask for Katie Telford to be invited to appear at the Defence Committee next week. Will you be supporting that? We think we need to get to the bottom of this, so we'll be supporting... Um Uh, any uh, st uh, steps that we can take to get to the bottom of it. So we think that's important. Uh, I, I haven't received that, uh, that information yet, so we'll review that with our team. Um, but we can say this. Right now, what's most important is what is the prime minister going to do, knowing what he knows now, to make sure women are safe in, in the Canadian forces? Like, what steps will the prime minister take? Like, what's he going to do about a, a, a minister that ignored it? What's he going to do now to make sure women who come forward have their concerns heard and are respected? I want to know what steps the prime minister, Justin Trudeau, is going to take now to protect women. That, to me, is really fundamental. When it comes down to it, what is going to change? What's going to happen? What accountability is going to be put in place? Justin Trudeau was the prime minister when this happened, and it is his responsibility. What is he going to do to protect women? Just as a follow-up, I also want to ask you about another opposition motion uh, that could come up tomorrow on Opposition Day, a, another conservative motion calling for the government to launch a public inquiry into the military sexual misconduct. It's been a problem that's been identified as endemic since 2015. 
been little uh, to, you know, apparent no progress to root it out, uh, as evidenced by multiple high-level allegations over the last three months. Do you believe that the country needs a public inquiry or a royal commission of, of some kind to independently assess the problem and restore confidence of both Canadians and the men and women who are serving uh, in the military and, and to make sure that they have the confidence that this is being taken seriously? Uh, I support in general the idea of, of having public inquiries. It gives us better insight into what's going on. It gives an independent assessment of the problem. And so in general, that's an approach I, I take as, uh, as helpful, it's shown to be helpful in the past. But, but I want to highlight, right now we've got uh, a prime minister that can do something about it, right now. Doesn't have to wait for an inquiry, doesn't have to wait for the investigation to uncover the problems. Clearly, women are not being listened to in the Canadian forces. What is Justin Trudeau gonna do about that now? Like, I want to know what the action plan is right now if a public inquiry takes place and it takes some time to assess and we see results down the road, between now and then, what steps are going to be taken immediately to keep women safe? Like We need to know that there's some accountability, that people can't ignore when complaints are raised, that those complaints can't be raised and then uh, the, the subject matter of that complaint gets promoted or gets uh, additional powers or additional responsibilities. That has to be addressed. And so I'm looking right now for Justin Trudeau to respond directly. What is he going to do right now? Not after an inquiry, not down the road. Right now, what is his message to, to women who right now feel like they are not being listened to, they are not safe, they are not secure at in the Canadian forces? What is he going to do right now? Operator, next question. Thank you. The next question comes from Carl Meyer from the National Observer. Please go ahead. Hi, Mr. Singh. Thanks for taking questions. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask you um, about the Trans Mountain Pipeline and uh, specifically its request to keep its insurance companies private. The, uh, the date for a decision is coming up on that soon. So I was just wondering if you could weigh in on uh, what, what you think their request for, for anonymity for their insurance says about the, the public perception of the pipeline? Well, I, I can say, I mean, you know this from, from the beginning, I said that this is not a project that I support and, and for many reasons, one being that really at the bottom line, at, at a fundamental level, there are resource sector workers that need to know that they have a future right now. They wanna see jobs being created. And what we've been advocating for are to immediately create job opportunities. We know that we need to clean abandoned oil wells. We need to ramp up that program and, and use the expertise of these resource workers right now to, to, to remediate those abandoned wells. Workers need to know there's a clear plan in place that will create jobs and create a sustainable future. We know that there are many concerns being raised about the sustainable future of this project, uh, the amount of money going in and the jobs being created. There's lots of questions being raised. I wanna see good value for money, and I wanna see an economy that is long lasting and sustainable, where we see good jobs for workers that are not just in the short term, but in the long term. And those criteria here are not being met by this project. We need one that actually creates jobs and creates them sustainably, and also helps us do our part to fight the climate crisis and reduce emissions. So uh, for many reasons, this is a project that, that I've been very clear about uh, that is not in the interest of workers and is not in the interest of this country. And I think the public is also expressing that as well. Thanks. Uh, and, and, and in terms of the um, the pipeline, uh, their argument, they say they would face uh, material loss because of pressure groups that are attacking their insurers. Um, as, as you know, there were indigenous youth groups like the, the Braided Warriors is one who have protested um, Trans Mountain's insurers and, and got arrested over it in Vancouver. Um, do you do you think the company's position is treating those indigenous groups who who say they were just doing peaceful sit-ins? Do you think they're treating them fairly? When it comes to um, the civic activities, people have the right to protest and should be able to protest and should be able to do so peacefully. Should be able to raise their concerns. And and I, as a as a leader of a party that has been uh, based in the labor movement, based in workers, raising concerns, been fighting back against unfair practices. It is important that we support work, uh, protesters' right to protest, people's right to protest, particularly Indigenous communities who have been silenced for so long. 
they've got the right to be able to raise their concerns and to do so uh, peacefully is absolutely the right and something we should support. Thank you. We'll take questions from the room. Man? Hello, Mr. Singh. Uh, Man Hamidi with the Canadian Press. Good to see you. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Good. So, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, confirmed that he will be attending a uh, live concert uh, in LA uh, this weekend to raise money for vaccines for the medical uh, uh, medical workers in the poorest countries. Uh, and the concert is organized by uh, by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Uh, what, what what do you think? What do you what do you think of this of Trudeau's decision to make to attend this conference? It, frankly, it's outrageous. We, we've got a prime minister who is unwilling to stand up to big pharma unwilling to waive the patents, which is what poor countries have said. What we what they've said is we need to be able to produce these vaccines in our countries and we need to see a waiver of the patent protection so we can produce the vaccines. That would be really standing up for countries that are that are struggling right now. To do this show on one hand, well on the other, he completely caves into Big Pharma, in fact, supports and backs up Big Pharma instead of fighting them is just ludicrous. Like what we need to do is is fight to make sure that low income countries can produce the vaccine, that we support them in a meaningful way. And doing this show is just again exactly that, just a show, not really helping the people in need. And we've got to acknowledge that this is a global pandemic. We have a global responsibility. We have to help people around the world because when the, the pandemic is still in any part of this world, it will impact all of us. So we have to fight it together. It is a global effort. We've got a responsibility as, as a nation that has uh, great wealth to be able to ensure that we're fighting it here at home, but also helping around the world. Thank you. Um, regarding the Montreal port strike, do you have any concerns that without patchwork legislation, the medical supplies and drugs sitting now uh, on container ships will not reach their destination in time amid this third wave? The, the workers of uh, the Port of Montreal have been very clear, the QP national president has been very clear, the workers do not want to in any way impede the flow of, of those critical items. And they've made that very clear. They're going to uh, in no way impede that flow and wherever they can identify it, make sure that, that those goods continue to flow. I think uh, what we need, if we want to have a functioning port with workers that are able to do their job, we have that when we respect workers. When workers are respected, when they are able to work in, in good conditions, when there's good conditions of work, they are able to do their best job, and that means goods will flow. Uh, impeding their ability to have a collective agreement, uh, impeding their ability to have a collective bargaining process will just be bad in the in the immediate term but also in the long term it means that workers aren't respected they aren't able to do their jobs properly and that is bad for everyone the best scenario is when we respect workers they're supported they're able to do their jobs and that's what we want to see happen here workers have the right to collectively uh, bargain they should be able to reach a collective agreement and they should be able to do that without the government interfering with their fundamental rights i'm mr singh david thurton from cbc it's very good to see you good to see you um one of your MPs, um, Mumila Kakak from Nunavut, announced yesterday that she is taking a pause from politics to deal with some mental health issues, to take care of herself. Uh, this is the second time that she has done this. And so I just wanted to ask you, what supports are you as leader, as the caucus, as the party, are you providing for an MP who is struggling? This is, uh, it's a very difficult and obviously very sensitive, and so we want to respect uh, Mumalak uh, Kakak's uh, privacy and her, um, and, and her personal information. But we can say that uh, our team, my leadership team, has been there every step of the way to provide supports, uh, staffing supports, and uh, I've been reaching out regularly to reach out to find any way I can help at all. Uh, this is a difficult time, and, and I ask everyone to give patience and grace and, and understanding. When someone's going through difficult times, they, they need support. And I encourage people to, to give Mumula Kakak uh, the space she needs, to, the time that she needs to, to get well. So can you maybe tell us a bit more about what sort of supports are you providing? Are they culturally sensitive? Uh, are they relevant for, for, for your MP who is Inuk? And also, what do you want to say to Nunavumu? the people of Nunavut who um, rely on her for representation. 
Certainly, I want the people in Nunavut to know that we are here to fight for you. Uh, I've been stepping in to provide uh, su support so that we can continue to advocate for the needs of the community, uh, the needs of the territory. So please, uh, you can count on me as leader to continue to fight for you. And uh, we are providing uh, supports uh, with everything we can to help out uh, with uh, Momolak. And we'll go back on the phone for one last question. Operator, do we have a question? Uh, there are no questions at this time. I return the meeting back over to you. And this concludes the press conference. Merci, thanks so much.